I think that I was destined to play Wonder Woman. I think there was some cosmic reason because the way that everything fell together. I had uh, gone out for the first time they did Wonder Woman and I didn't even get a call back. Uh, Kathy Lee Crosby did it and it was like the wrong costume, the wrong hair color. It just was cheesy and not well done. And then um, they decided to redo it and I I was just a struggling actress. I'd had a couple of parts. I was a member of the Screen Actors Guild, but that's it. I'd done a couple of one-day things here and there. And uh, I was studying and, and, and uh, working hard to um, make it in Hollywood. And I had done a couple of screen tests. And uh, there's a thing called cold readings. Cold readings are the worst thing that ever happened to actors. They just give you a piece of paper, you have a few minutes to look at it, and then you go in with someone who is terrible, a script person, man, and man, and man, and then you be great. And I, I really have never gotten a job off a cold reading in my life. Uh, and I didn't have to cold read because they saw the film. So they met me and they said, oh, we've seen some film on you. Oh, thank God. So we just would like for you to test. And so, oh my God, it was thrilling. It was really thrilling. And I really set, um, I set the tone for her then. I think the way that I put myself on the line, sort of, in how I thought that she should be played. And um, there was a, I, I didn't have any experience, so the network didn't want to take a chance. But the producer said, this is the only person that can play this, and either we won't do it, or... So he really went on the limb, out on the limb for me, and the rest is history. I had $25 in my bank account when I got Wonder Woman. I didn't make a caricature out of Wonder Woman. I made her real. This is what she does, and she does it very well. But it's not the posturing and posing. And There are a couple real stinkers in the first couple of episodes of Wonder Woman. Oh, they're really stinkers. Anybody that, there are fans out there that really know all these shows. What about this episode? I don't even know what episode they, you know. I don't remember what the episodes were called. And um, I had had some notes from the producers saying they wanted more of this and they wanted to, you know, and so I tried doing that and, you know, pull the rope like it's, you know, oh. and so I did a couple of, of shows that were just real stinkers. And, um, and I went back to them and told them I didn't, that this wasn't right, and they agreed and I went back to my way of doing things. That's so much a part of the fantasy portion of Wonder Woman. The stunts were, uh, the fights and the stunts and the bad guys, you know, good and evil and the American flag and all of that, uh, kind of all wrapped up with a pretty lady and one that was likable, but as I said, I played it for real. And I, thanks to Jeannie, I think I, I did all right with it in terms of the stunts. It was a new arena for Jeannie. It was a new arena for me. And no one had come before. We made it up as we went along, what worked and what didn't work. And I don't think we thought about creating anything. I think that the collaboration was so fundamental to the evolution of Wonder Woman uh, that it was sort of second nature for both of us. Jeannie. I knew she was grateful to have been chosen 
to be my stunt double because I was grateful as an actor to even have a part. It, you got to remember the time it was. It was the 70s. And basically, women in television were, if you were a young and attractive girl, you were a hooker or you were a, a secretary or you were someone's. It, you, there wasn't really any personality in any of the roles that were being offered. So it was a real breakthrough for both of us. She wanted so to do well. And I think there were probably a lot of women on the periphery now that that little door was open that were younger, taller, you know, but without the experience that she had, without the background of the family that she had. Um, and it's very cutthroat. And so, uh, I think that the, the guys, and, and it's very competitive among the guys too, who's coordinating this show and that show, and now that these, you know, Bionic Woman was out, and and there was actually, you know, it spawned a lot of, of uh, new work. She helped me get comfortable in Wonder Woman's skin. She taught me. She taught me how to throw a punch. She taught me, um, she would be the first to say, you know, Linda, I think you can do this. I think you should do this. You can do this. I was You can do this. I think Jeannie Epper really saw me grow up. She saw me go through a lot of things. Um, she saw me in a very unhappy marriage. It was a time in my life where uh, I really was searching because I was in such a I never wanted to leave the set. I didn't want to go home. I, it wasn't a happy place. And uh, I had had some experience in high school with, you know, youth groups and that sort of thing. And in my life since, I think that my faith has become much more inclusive. I think whenever faith can help you do the right thing, help you be a kinder person, giving person, better friend, better mother, whatever, that it's a good thing. It's only when you use it for judgment of other people that it turns ugly. I had no idea that Jeannie was not getting screen credit. I, uh, it's a surprise to me right now when you told me this. I had no idea. It would never occur to me that she wouldn't. I never looked at the screen credits. When I would see the episodes, they never had credits. You know, it was just the piece. It was never the, all the titles and everything. It was just the episode. And uh, I never really looked, I guess, but it never even occurred to me that she wouldn't have gotten credit for it. Yeah, that the, that the stunt double is a non-entity and they don't really exist. It's really the actor because this is play acting here. Yeah, that's pathetic. <laughs>